where a man is in jail accused of killing his wife and their unborn daughter. When I was told what was happening, I just felt like a father. I wasn't there to protect my daughter. Talking about there's a romantic component is about power and control of a person over another person. Today, we're going to talk about a really sad story that happened in Richland County, South Carolina. It's not an easy topic, but it's important to understand what happened and maybe learn something from it. Something terrible happened to a woman named Chandrika Graham. She was 31 years old and lived in a nice neighborhood in Richland County. Chandrika was a mom to a little two-year-old boy named Keon, and she was also seven months pregnant with a baby girl she was going to name Tegan. But on June 18, 2024, everything took a turn for the worse when her husband made a rash decision that would have devastating consequences. On that day, around 11 in the morning, some sheriff's deputies came to Chandrika's house. They were there to do what's called a welfare check, that's when someone asks the police to make sure a person is okay because they haven't heard from them in a while. When the deputies got there, they saw something truly terrifying through the window. They could see a woman lying on the floor inside the house, and she wasn't moving. They knew something was very wrong, so they went inside. What they found was just heartbreaking. Chandrika was there, but she had been badly hurt. The deputies said she had significant trauma to her head. Now I know this is tough to hear, but it's important to understand what happened. The deputies called for help right away, but it was too late. Chandrika had succumbed to her injuries, and because she was pregnant, her baby girl, Tegan, didn't make it either. To find out that I was that close to her and didn't know, you know, that the reason why she was answering the phone was not because she was, was working, it was because she was deceased. You can imagine how shocked and sad everyone was. Chandrika's family got the worst news any family could get. Her dad, Harold White, was driving on the highway when he got the call. That's what they proceeded to tell me, um, that she was deceased. And I literally was on the highway and I had to pull over because that's not a call no parent in life should ever get. It's hard to even think about how Chandrika's dad must have felt at that moment. Getting news like that about your child is just unimaginable. As the police started looking into what happened, they found out something really upsetting. They arrested Chandrika's husband, Jared Graham. He was 35 years old. The police said they thought Jared was the one who hurt Chandrika and caused her untimely demise. But this is where the story gets even sadder. Jared wasn't just arrested for hurting Chandrika. The police charged him with two really serious crimes, murdering Chandrika and causing the death of their unborn baby. They also found out that Jared had been in trouble before for having a gun when he wasn't supposed to back in May 2023. Now let's talk a bit more about Chandrika and her family. Everyone who knew her said she was an amazing mom. Her stepmom, Kathy White, had nothing but kind words to say when describing her Chandrika. She absolutely loved being a mom. Like, more than anything, she loved being a mom. Uh, and she was a great mom. Chandrika was really excited about having her baby girl, and she had already picked out the name Tegan. Chandrika came from a family that was really close. Her grandmother, Yvonne Loudon, talked about how much they all cared for each other. Chandrika was raised in a loving family. If one hurt, we all hurt. If one needed one, we were there. And the passion that my family is showing now. It's clear that Chandrika was loved by a lot of people. She wasn't just a great mom. She was also someone who cared a lot about kids in general. She wanted to work in childcare and was passionate about helping children. But here's something that makes this whole situation even more heartbreaking. Chandrika's dad, Harold, had been through something like this before. He said that Chandrika's birth mom had also died because of domestic violence when she was 35 years old. Now, Harold was losing his daughter in a similar way. She died at 35, my daughter died at 31, and now she's got a two-year-old son that I gotta raise. It's just unbelievable, you know, the parallel. Can you imagine going through something so terrible not once? But twice? It's just awful to think about. Now let's talk about what happened after the police found Chandrika. They started investigating right away. They looked all around the house for clues about what happened. 
They talked to neighbors to see if anyone had seen or heard anything unusual. The police also looked into Jared's background. They found out that they had been called to Chandreka and Jared's house before. This made them wonder if there had been problems in their relationship for a while. If this scenario sounds familiar, it's probably because it's a pattern that's extremely prevalent in abusive relationships. But more on that later, her friends talked about how kind she was, how she always had a smile on her face, and how much she loved her little boy, Kian. Chandreka's sister, Tatiana, seemed to agree. My sister was a very charismatic person. She was very kind and very loving. Um, and she always tried to lighten up the mood and like make people laugh. It's clear that Chandreka was the kind of person who made others happy just by being around them. As news of what happened spread, people in the community started coming together. They held candlelight vigils to remember Chandreka and her baby. People who didn't even know her came to show support for her family. The police held a press conference to tell everyone what they knew so far. They explained that they were charging Jared with murder and with causing the death of an unborn child. These are really serious charges. They also talked about how important it is for people to speak up if they think someone might be in danger. Chandreka's dad, Harold, had some really powerful words about this. If you got friends that you're telling them to and they think that they're being good friends by keeping their secret, that's not being a good friend. You gotta say, if you see some, hear some, you've got to say something. This is a really important message. Sometimes people are afraid to get involved or they think it's not really their business. But Harold's words remind us that speaking up could save someone's life. As the investigation went on, more details came out. The police found out that Jared had been in court just a few days before for something else. They were looking into whether this might have had something to do with what happened to Chandreka. The whole community was talking about what happened. People were asking how something like this could happen in their neighborhood. As all this was going on, Chandreka's family was trying to cope with their loss. They had to start planning a funeral, which is just heartbreaking to think about. They decided to have the funeral in Greenwood where a lot of their family lives. Now let's talk a bit more about Chandreka's family and how they're dealing with all this. It's not easy, as you can imagine. They're going through something that no family should ever have to experience. Chandreka's little boy, Kian, is only two years old. That's really young, and the family is worried that he might not remember his mom when he gets older. Can you imagine how hard that must be? They're trying to figure out how to keep Chandreka's memory alive for him. Her dad is stepping up to take care of Kian now. My biggest thing was to get back up here to get my grandson. It's really touching to see how they're supporting each other through this terrible time. Now let's talk a bit more about the investigation. The police are being really thorough because they want to make sure they have all the facts. They're looking at everything, phone records, text messages, and talking to anyone who might know something about what happened. They're especially interested in the days leading up to that terrible Wednesday. They want to know if there were any signs that something was wrong. Did anyone see Chandreka and Jared arguing? Did Chandreka tell anyone she was scared or worried? The police are also looking into Jared's background more. They found out he had some trouble with the law before. They know that back in May 2023, he got in trouble for having a gun when he wasn't supposed to. They're trying to figure out if this has anything to do with what happened to Chandreka. One of the things that's really bothering everyone is that the police had been called to Chandreka and Jared's house before. Now, we don't know exactly what happened those other times, but it makes people wonder if something could have been done earlier to prevent this tragedy. I talked to the victim's father and he tells me that he never suspected that this would happen. In fact, he says he talked with Jared Graham just on Father's Day and everything seems fine. But now his daughter is dead and he will never know the granddaughter that his family was planning a shower for. The investigators are being really careful with all the evidence they're collecting. They know how important it is to do everything right so that they can get justice for Chandrika and baby Tegan. They're also talking to experts who know a lot about domestic violence. These experts can help them understand things that might not be obvious to everyone else. They might see patterns or signs that others might miss. First of all, everyone needs to understand that an uh, intimate partner violence, which is really what we're talking about, there's a romantic component, is about power and control of a person over another person. 
And that sounds like, why would you want to control another person? But that at its heart is what we're working with and looking at. While all this is going on, Jared is in jail. He had to go to something called a bond hearing. That's where a judge decides if someone can get out of jail while they're waiting for their trial. In Jared's case, the judge said he has to stay in jail. He'll have to wait there until his next court date, which isn't until late August. Now, let's talk a bit more about Chandraka herself. Everyone who knew her says she was a really special person. Her family says she had a way of lighting up a room when she walked in. She was always smiling and trying to make other people happy. Chandraka worked as a social worker, which tells you a lot about the kind of person she was. Social workers help people who are going through tough times. They need to be patient, kind, and good at listening. From what everyone says, Chandraka was all of those things. It's heartbreaking to think about all the dreams and plans Chandraka had that will never come true now. She was only 31 years old and had so much life ahead of her. The community where Chandraka lived is really shaken up by what happened. People are scared and sad. They're wondering how something like this could happen in their neighborhood. It's making a lot of people think about their own relationships and the relationships of people they know. Local organizations that help people dealing with domestic violence say they've been getting more calls since this happened. People are reaching out to ask how they can get help or how they can help their friends or family members who might be in danger. These organizations are trying to use this terrible situation to educate people. They're reminding everyone that domestic violence can happen to anyone, in any neighborhood. They want people to know the warning signs and what to do if they think someone needs help. When you see a situation where an individual cannot make their own choices, and often people notice the physical signs, they notice the hair pulled out, they notice the bruising of the scalp, they notice the scratches, but there are a lot of other signs. Lack of ability to control your finances is domestic violence. Making your decision, isolating the person from family and friends that they historically have had good relationships with. One of the things they're also emphasizing is that pregnant women can be especially vulnerable to domestic violence. Sometimes, the stress of having a baby can make existing problems in a relationship worse. They want people to know that there's help available if they're in this situation. Actually, homicide from an intimate partner is the number one cause of death for a pregnant woman. The police are also using this as an opportunity to talk about domestic violence. They're reminding everyone that they take these situations very seriously. They want people to know that it's okay to call them if they're scared or if they think someone else might be in danger. They're also talking about something called a protective order. This is a legal document that can help keep someone safe from an abusive partner. The police want people to know that this is an option and that they can help someone get a protective order if they need one. Um, they started out because when, when somebody would be harassed, usually it was a female asking for one to keep a guy away from them. Um, they, could, they made a law that said, hey, a judge can uh, order somebody to do that without even having a hearing if there's enough evidence from the, from the girl that's accusing the guy of it or vice versa. People are really coming together to support Chandraka's family. There have been candlelight vigils where people gather to remember Chandraka and baby Tegan. These vigils are a way for people to show that they care and that they won't forget what happened. Local churches and community centers are holding meetings to talk about domestic violence. They want to make sure people know how to recognize the signs and what to do if they think someone needs help. They're also offering counseling services for anyone who's feeling upset or scared because of what happened. Others are focusing on prevention. They want to see more programs in schools and community centers that teach people about healthy relationships. They believe that if people learn how to communicate better and handle their emotions in a healthy way, there might be less violence. There's also been a lot of talk about how the system failed Chandraka. People are asking questions like, why wasn't more done when the police were called to their house before? Could someone have intervened earlier? These are tough questions, but they're important to ask if we want to prevent something like this from happening again. The local news has been covering the story a lot. They've been interviewing Chandraka's family and friends, talking to experts about domestic violence, and keeping everyone updated on the investigation. It's been hard for the family to see Chandraka's story all over the news, but they hope it might help other people. Chandraka's dad, Harold, 
has been really brave in talking to the media. He wants to make sure people understand how serious domestic violence is. You got to say, if you see something, hear something, you got to say something. And I can't express that enough. I mean, for, for me to have to deal with this gut-wrenching experience twice. He doesn't want any other family to go through what he's going through. The family is also thinking about how to honor Chandrika's memory. They're talking about starting a foundation in her name to help other victims of domestic violence. They want something good to come out of this terrible situation. As for little Keon, the family is determined to make sure he grows up knowing how much his mom loved him. They're collecting photos and videos, and they're writing down stories about Chandrika. They want Keon to know what an amazing person his mom was. The investigation is still ongoing. The police are being very thorough because they want to make sure they have a strong case. They know how important it is to Chandrika's family and to the whole community that justice is served. There's going to be a trial at some point, but that might not happen for a while. These things can take a long time. The family knows they have a long road ahead of them, but they're determined to see it through. In the meantime, they're focusing on taking care of each other and little Kian. They're trying to take things one day at a time. Some days are harder than others, but they're staying strong for each other. This whole situation has been a wake-up call for a lot of people. It's making them think about their own relationships and the relationships of people they know. It's a reminder that we all need to look out for each other. If there's one thing we can all learn from this tragedy, it's the importance of speaking up. If you're worried about someone, or if you're in a situation that doesn't feel right, don't stay quiet. There are people who can help. You might just save a life. Chandrika's story is heartbreaking, but by talking about it and learning from it, maybe we can prevent something like this from happening to someone else. That's what her family is hoping for. They want Chandrika's life to have meaning, even in death. Chandrika may be gone, but her story lives on. And through her story, maybe we can all learn to be a little kinder, a little more aware, and a little more willing to help others. That would be a fitting tribute to a woman who, by all accounts, brought so much love and light into the world. It's not just Chandrika's family and close friends who are affected. This kind of event shakes up an entire neighborhood, and even an entire town. People who never met Chandrika are thinking about her and her family. They're asking themselves tough questions. Could this happen to someone I know? What would I do if I suspected someone was in danger? It's making everyone a little more aware of what might be going on behind closed doors. Those are the things that we educate individuals on. We are not asking you to intervene. We are asking you to understand the issue and provide resources for that person and let the professionals handle it from there. Chandrika's dad, Harold, is taking on a lot of responsibility. He's not only grieving the loss of his daughter, but he's also now raising his grandson. He's determined to give Kian the best life possible. The family is also thinking about Chandrika's unborn daughter, Tegan. They're mourning the loss of a child they never got to meet. It's a unique kind of grief that not many people understand. The family is also finding strength in each other. They're spending a lot of time together, sharing memories of Chandrika, and supporting each other through the tough moments. They say it's what Chandrika would have wanted. As for the legal case against Jared, it's still in the early stages. The family knows they have a long road ahead of them. They're prepared for a trial, which could be months or even years away. They say they'll do whatever it takes to get justice for Chandrika and Tegan. The police are continuing their investigation. They're being very thorough, leaving no stone unturned. They want to make sure they build the strongest case possible. They're also looking into whether there were any missed opportunities to intervene before things escalated to this point. This case has sparked a larger conversation about how domestic violence cases are handled. People are asking whether enough is being done to protect victims. They're wondering if there need to be changes in the law or in how these cases are investigated. Some people are calling for stricter penalties for domestic violence offenders. Others are pushing for more resources to be put into prevention programs. There's a lot of debate about the best way to address this issue. One thing everyone seems to agree on is that something needs to change. No one wants to see another family go through what Chandrika's family is going through.
As we wrap up this story, it's important to remember that behind all the headlines and statistics, there was a real person. Chandraka was a daughter, a sister, a mother, and a friend. She had hopes and dreams. She had a whole life ahead of her that was cut tragically short. If there's one thing we can take away from this terrible situation, it's the importance of looking out for each other. If you see something that doesn't seem right, say something. If you're worried about someone, reach out. It might feel awkward or uncomfortable, but it could save a life. And if you're in a situation where you don't feel safe, know that there's help available. There are people who will believe you and support you. You don't have to face it alone. Chandraka's story is heartbreaking, but maybe by talking about it and learning from it, we can prevent something like this from happening to someone else. That's what her family is hoping for. They want Chandraka's life to have meaning, even in death. So let's honor Chandraka's memory by being kinder to each other, by speaking up when we see something wrong, and by working to create a world where everyone feels safe in their own home. That would be a fitting tribute to a woman who brought so much love into the world. And to Chandraka and baby Tegan, may they rest in peace. They will not be forgotten.